Vladimir, you good? Gronje, you good? Good to go, yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode two, I suppose, in our four-part series um, of long-term player development from the beginning to the top with Vladimir Vanja Gribic. Um, last week, the, the first part of the series focused on providing an overview of long-term athlete development or long-term player development. So we went through the different stages um, from fundamentals right through to um, compete to win. This week, we are honing in really, as you can see there on the presentation, on the age group from 11 to 16 years old, um, which I know for our Irish coaches and teachers is, is a key age. Um, so looking forward to seeing some of the, the content which uh, Vladimir is going to go through in a little while. Um, just really to reiterate the aim of the programme is to really provide education around coaching principles and Vladimir's approach to developing long-term players, but also people as well, and using sport very much as the tool to develop good people as much as it is for developing good players. And that's something that we are very keen to promote here in Ireland. And the benefits that volleyball can bring for a lifelong um, experience of, of sports participation. So again, we'll be covering some of the key principles and approaches to coaching and very much hope that you enjoy the, next, the presentation for the next 45 minutes or so, after which Grania will be chairing um, a Q&A. So as last week, you can pop your questions for Vladimir into the Q&A box at the bottom, and we'll try and cover as many as we can at the end. So Vladimir, um, without further ado, I'll hand over to yourself and we can get the show on the road. Cheers. Okay. Uh, thank you, Gary. Hello, Gronja. Uh, I will try to be a little bit faster because last time I really enlarged my, my presentation because I would like to be more concrete to give you less information but more quality information. Before we start, I would like to mention some of the things. First of all, we are speaking about the general uh, informations and general plan when we are speaking or, or actually principles in work with the kids or with youth. These principles are uh, connected not only for volleyball, but for all kinds of sports. Uh, so uh, they are following physiological development, which means chronological and biological age of the kids, which are uh, actually are happening or they are go with our growth, which means that our body has sensitive and critical uh, periods in uh, motor skill developments, in uh, speed, force, resistance, coordination, agility. And uh, this actually uh, is more important than teaching kids some certain skill at certain age, because the skill we can learn even afterwards. But the uh, motor, uh, motor skill, no because it's happened in a certain time. And when it happens, we have to respect it and we have to work on it. That's why in this matter, it's very important that we know and we are aware of certain uh, periods of the time which are fundamental for general kids development. Coaches of youth are like teachers. Our job and their approach is absolutely the same. Uh, teachers in the school are helping kids to understand because they are not still selected uh, on almost the sale soil. So we have better students, we have worse students, but generally we have to help every one of them to uh, understand and get in love what we are trying, what of knowledge, what we are trying to transfer to them. So it's always about waking up the potential inside of the kids and trying to give them uh, what is uh, essentially already inside of them. So uh, we can or, or we have to develop ability to help the others to work on themselves and improve themselves. It's not about us. What I'm giving you are the tools and the principles. It's, these are not exercises to follow exactly copy-paste, as I say, because 
uh, there is a big chance to fall into mistake. Uh, what we are talking today is age 1116. Age 1116 is very particular in the ball sports. Of course, you know, volleyball. Why? Because everything that happens in, uh, or mostly what happens in the motor development is happening in, in age 1116. And we are not the beginners anymore. We have to work in two senses. One sense is uh, acquirement of the technical skills, which is, of course, important because it's alphabet of the volleyball. And second thing is uh, motor development, which will not help just the kids to be fast, strong, or resistant. But most of all, because of the fast growth that kids have in this period and bones are uh, growing exponentially, uh, we have to think to protect them. So work of prevention is fundamental. That's why the work that you will see is based mainly on prevention and preparation of the body and tissue for the uh, work that we have to do with them. So let's start. We have age 1116, which is building physical and mental capabilities. Uh, we have addiction to develop more technical, uh, techniques of the sport, as we said last time. So uh, what we have to pay attention is prevention due growth, protection of articulation, and the soft tissue, as I said before. Uh, age 11, we, we actually essentially divide this age in three blocks. First block is 11, 12 which is basic ground technique for our pass and setting uh, with a minimum correction because we don't have to pay attention too many on details, too many information will confuse them, it's not good. And introduction of the net uh, elements or correct approach to the net. Already here, we have to think how to help the kids to uh, bring their body to the net. Um, Next stage is age uh, 13, 14, which would be same thing that we have done in 11, 12, trying to improve them more. Plus, we will learn spike technique uh, much better. Age 15, 16, we are not any more beginners. We are not any more only improving, but we are ready to start for serious work. So we have also uh, uh, improvement of the technical elements and preparation for the elements of the game, which will be also physiological uh, development. So let's start with age 11, 11, 12. As we said, it's basic setting passing with minimal correction and introduction on the net elements, the correct approach to the net, etc., etc., etc. Before we start, and I mean uh, before we try to think about volleyball, first thing that we have to know is to get to know who we are working with. That's why we need initial test of evaluation, which is orthopedic nature, motor development, and psychology. Orthopedic and psychology we can do once in a year. Motor development is more complex, and I will explain it a little bit uh, more concrete afterward. Or why orthopedic test is important because uh, if you have some postural problem and you don't pay attention on it, you will arrive that you are working with the kid and kid is feeling problem. They cannot work properly because this mechanic problem is forcing them to make mistakes and they are not living with quality, then the sport is not becoming the quality and development, but it's becoming trauma, which is not good. Whatever you do correctly now in this age, afterwards you will not have problem. If you have uh, or you ignore the problem that we, we find now, after that will be maybe the problem which will cause the athlete to stop his career prematurely or to stop at all. So uh, working properly on postural status is like construct the house on the solid base. So then afterwards we can construct everything else. Motor development, as I said at the beginning, has to follow what is uh, the rule, but most important psychological test to understand 
how the kids are, what kind of game they like, are they like for one on one, two on two, three on three, four on four, are they like to play with the girls, what kind of coach they want, uh, how is their relationship, etc. So at least we get the information before to understand what kids we have near to us. Motor development tests are done on three months. And don't be afraid to do that. Why? It's not yeah, too many tests, too many that. No. Do you know why? Because in this way, you will understand when your kid is improving in speed, in strength, in resistance, or in coordination and agility. So you will know when he is exactly entering in this period that is fundamental for him. This period normally is changing. Why? Because you have kids which mature before and you have kids who mature later. When you learn once and you have pattern of one kid and other kids are coming to you, you can recognize the pattern and you already know when this kid will come. So it's very useful for you to have a base and to prepare yourself uh, when you do the tests to know exactly the projection where this kid will go. Um, Motor tests are very simple, and I am doing on my camp a little bit more complicated because we have equipment, but it's very easy, like uh, throw at the medical ball, which is only two kilos. Um, it's long jump. It's X test, which is modified, and uh, uh, some anthropometric uh, measures or, or tests, which are helping us to understand, like reach, uh, opening of the of the arms, uh, height, uh, body mass, etc., etc., etc. So at least we can follow the progress of our kid. For example, my professor have uh, the results of uh, the best water polo player in the world since his age 12. Okay, this is remarkable data because when you come back and you know when at a certain time. Uh, something is happening to the kid, you have the parameters so you can understand where your, kid, where your kid is on behalf of the results you have. When you get these results, when you get this data, you can create a program. Program that is for entire year or for three months regarding motor development. Because next time when you measure the kids, you can change the program on behalf of the results that you get. This is only indicational, okay? And you will see, and most important thing is to follow the program, how it goes and which, uh, which way it goes. Training is composed of three parts and you will see it's for all three ages. Introduction, main part and final part. And as we said, physiological capability is uh, three times or one and a half hours per week. This might need some co correction because if kids are more or less capable, we'll have, if they are less capable, we have to bring them to uh, the level to be in condition to. We are always uh, speaking about optimal physiological capability. So we have at the beginning, when we get the results, we have 15 minutes of orthopedic prevention uh, exercises individualized program, and we have uh, motor development exercises, also individual program, which is first half hour warming up is through actually program based on ourselves, okay? And we are entering like this every single day, kids understand what they have to do. Uh, I will give you, last time you see four minutes uh, of some exercises with the ball. This is from my camp, the kids are doing steps in combination with running on the spike that you can use or running and then making block or running whatever but essentially you can make combination whatever you want change it because it's becoming more interesting for kids because if it's always the same pattern it's not good it's becoming boring for them but generally this kind of exercises are very important. Look at the feet. You can watch the movement of the feet. It's very important because feet are our contact with the ground. 
speed, agility, and movementation of the feet are indicators of our capability of movement and everything. And of course, flexibility as a preventer of injuries. So uh, in introductional part of the training, it's absolutely fundamental. I believe the video will stop now. Yeah, just a little bit more. Then we have main part of the training, which is lasting like 30 or 45 minutes, where we have skill introduction and in explanation of the skill, try to do as simply as you can and less information possible. Too many informations will just make them be confused. Okay, in this way, much better analytical approach which is show them small parts and then introduce them uh, so more and more. Minimal correction of the technique, but pay attention on entire movement. This is much more important. Games are based on the skill that kids have to acquire and you will see in the final part I put in which uh, relation. And here we have balloons and the beginning of the balloons where we pay attention on the leg movement. And we have huge variation of the exercises, really. You can invent, or they will play only with the, with the head, turn 180 or turn one, uh, 360. Shall they play with one hand, uh, then with the, with the head, turn, whatever. So you just have to play with this and invent the things by yourself. That is the best thing you can do. Uh, in this age, choice of the ball on behalf of the age and capability is very important because uh, using, you can say, I don't have another balls, only these officials. And you give official balls to small kids, they will start to push the ball. They will not be able to play. Uh, they will be bored because they cannot play properly and they will give up. So they have to play with the ball which is appropriate for them. Lighter ball or if they are more capable, uh, heavier ball. This is an exercise with the balloons. Now, as you see, these two guys on your right are using more head and more back which is very wrong. The movement has to be only from the legs with no movement of the trunk and no movement on the head, only and exclusively. You see two Russian guys, only on the top of the feet without stability. No, that's not good. Now you will see. So you throw the balloon up, you go with the arms behind your back, and the movement is down and up without moving trunk and your head. Okay, from the front, the balloon goes up. Look, this is the movement. Okay, why? In this way, you are helping kids acquisition of the setting and passing with use of the biggest engine of our body, which are the legs. And the balloon, why balloon? Because balloon is giving the kids time to move and arrive under the ball. So they will have all the time of this world to arrive and play the ball properly with both legs long. Okay. Uh, what is that left? Okay. And we are arriving here in setting. So you can choose whatever you want. Here in this exercise, it's important to play under the ball. This coach has invented original way to toes, put them back, because in girls especially, girls are pushing the toes in the front. How to bring them back, like to put them behind, and long movement, only long movement from the legs and from the arms. You get better control and you get more power. 
which is for the kids much, 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 or very, very important. Okay. All variations you can play with the ball, with the with with the hands. Then you can go only with the head, and then you can play on the other side. So the ball will go away if they don't use their legs. And this happened many times. But no, we have already seen this, so we don't want to see this. Okay. Um, wait a second. Now, one more thing I wanted to show you is we can use also the sand. Why we can use the sand? Sand is fantastic proprioceptive platform. It's softer, so we can start with the kids even before certain things. The program that we do with the kids is fantastic. This group that you are watching now is the smallest group. This is group eight, 10. But we are using with them all kind of exercises of motor development. And they can do everything. Why did I choose exactly this video? I choose this video because of uh, the face of these girls that you will see in a few in a few seconds. They are smiling. When you achieve the smile on the kid's face, you have succeeded. That is the best vote for you. If your kids are not smiling, you have failed. No matter how good coach you are, results of what you are doing is kid smile. Final part of the training is 15 to 30 minutes. And as I said, we already start in the main part. It's game format 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, but never more than 4, 4. Why? Because we need more contacts possible of the kids so they get uh feeling with with the ball we go on recapitulation of the new skill we have a short talk and of course always congratulations of those who have done good job we are in age 13 40 we are controlling the ball so we already have passed some uh some years in in, in passing and and, and uh, setting now we are adding the spiking technique. We also start with the individual test, orthopedic, motor development, and psychology. I will not add anything because I was explaining this uh, before. What could be additional are maybe some tests in motor development which can help us to see development better, but doesn't matter. So as we have done the test, we create the program. We start with training. We have also introduction, main part, and final part. In this age, we have four trainings per two hours per week. Absolutely, also here, we might need correction. Now, I will give you a very short, a very brief, uh, I will share with you an experience. Uh, when I was studying uh, long-term athlete development and Ishtar and Body Theory, there were two swimmers. One were 13 years old and the other was 14 years old. The guy who was 13 years old was looked like biologically he was 11 years old, which means he was maturing later. And the guy with 14 years old, biologically he was 16 years old. So even if chronologically was only one year of difference between them, actually there was five years biologically. These things are important when you are creating the program and yet when you are taking in consideration work with the kids. Why? Because every one of us need a special medicine. If you make mistake, it's serious. Because the kids are like blank paper. Everything you write on stays. Also the traumas. So it's very important that you as a first or second coach, you are creator of the kids' culture in the sport and love for sport. So if we fail, we are not failing one athlete. 
we are failing seriously to a personality. We have introductional part of the training, which is 30 minutes. Again, same thing, orthopedic prevention exercises based on data, individualized program, uh, also motor development, individual program. What this means? This means that everybody has his own data. The polygon for orthopedic or exercises of uh, orthopedic prevention and exercises of motor development are on the same uh, polygon. But everybody is working different quantity and intensity and number of the exercises. Main part of the training now is already is going 45 to 60 minutes. We have skill introduction and difference is that we now start to have repetition work, which is number of repetitions. And we have drills with the movement. So let's say we can stay in couples, two, but we can also stay in three, four, or five. So we, when we play setting, passing, and spiking, we are going and circling. So also our pulse and our breathing is under pressure. So we are also working on development because we have to arrive to age 15, 16, ready to start for some serious work. Adequate correction, adequate correction on technique uh, and also on movement, which means not too much, but let's say a medium level. What we have to do also is pay, make them pay attention on thinking process. They have to think what they have to do, uh, in which way they have to do something, okay? Execution of the skill. Balloons also very good to be used, also exercises variation. Uh, games based on skill to acquire, and in this period, you give them on skill points, points that they made with the skill they are learning, they get double value. So they will force themselves to make the points with the skill that they are learning. Choice of the ball here, they are already should start with, uh, with, uh, with official ball. Some of them I was using, for example, uh, 330 on my camp which is training ball, which is absolutely very okay. But if there is somebody who is not at the level, let's say physiologically to play, or for some certain exercises, you can use also other type of the ball. This is how the old wolf on my camp is teaching kids to spike. This exercise that you will see is combination of coordination, and technique together. As you remember, coordination until 12 years, 90% of our neural system is developed. So we have to work on coordination constantly. Nothing is granted. You have to work on it. The first guy who's spiking is son of my brother. And you will see for many of them, some difficulties in movement. For example, the first one had a problem with not very strong shoulder. A lot of these kids that are uh, him, for example, he doesn't have strong shoulder. A lot of these kids, for example, came on my camp for the first time. And after just a couple of days, they already arrived to spike without any problem. Why? Because motorically, they are okay. So, He's paying attention on certain details when he sees that many kids are failing in execution. These are girls and the, the drills I was saying. So combination of passing, setting, and spiking. Now, this guy I wanted to show you, and I was making mistake also today. So pay attention on this little buddy and his wrong movement his wrong movement of the foot in volleyball for me personally wrong step in spike is absence of attention of coach and this is uh, elementar analphabetic in volleyball 
paying attention to kid and development is very important. They are our projection inside of the field. So if coach have uh, players who are uh, with this approach, it means he don't care very much. I've seen the teams with five or six kids spiking in this way. They can play with this way. But tell me, how many players did you see to play on high level in this way? Biomechanically, I can explain you that this is very wrong, especially because it has some issues. But this, as it happens, this you have to correct right away. Girls, are, girls were much better, of course, but also you have to know. No, I will have to go again like this. So in this age, we go on two and two, three and three, four and four, five, five and six, six, because we are already start to play. Final part of the training is 15, 30. And we have already started in main part of the training with these games. So we have recapitulation of the new skill with avoiding too many informations. Even here, short talk and congratulations. We are ready, which means that we already are in the age that we are ready to be under stress. We have everything before with elements of the game and preparation for, for the elements of the game. We have orthopedic, motor development, motor development test, and of course, psychology. We create the program, introduction main part in this age. Quantity of the training is five per two hours per week. In some cases, in some cases, could happen that it will be could be also bigger number of the trainings, but this depends on um, on capability of the kids. Same thing, introductional part of the training could be if there is no big issues, and if the kids in motor development are more or less uh, in uh, in line or over then we can do other kind of prevention uh, like resistance, isometry, crunch, abdominals, uh, plunk, and everything which is consenting protection of our body, everything. And first half an hour, we are using in analytic protective work to protect them. Why? Because they are still growing. This is something I wanted to show you. This is work that we have on, in the swimming pool um, with the physiotherapist where the kids learn to breathe properly because many kids do not know how to breathe properly. And this is the big pressure for heart. So we teach them how to breathe. We teach them uh, how properly to run. They are jumping inside of the swimming pool because three jumps inside of the swimming pool are like one jump on a parquet. In this way, stress on articulation is zero. And this kind of, of work is a very good, especially in preparation and initial phase, also for the professionals or for the level that we will speak in the next week, which is 17, 18, and more. So uh, this is big fun. Uh, it's fantastic for prevention. It's very good for physiological development. And if you have possibility, absolutely use the swimming pool. I will not say how much fun they have because you cannot even imagine. It's just, it's fantastic. 
uh, we had a fantastic time because they went to, to the swimming pool five times in a week in seven days. So main part of the training is 45 to 60 minutes. Skill introduction, we have repetition work, drills with the movement and conditioning in the same time. So this is much more requestive approach than 13, 14 or especially 11, 12. We have more correction attention on the movement and technique details. Now here we strive for perfection. Thinking process during execution of the skill, orientation of the goal. And as you see, I have put inside of the uh, fear. About the fear, I will talk much more in the fourth session. Because fear happens when there is no thinking process during the training. And I will explain you regarding serve and regarding um, regarding um, um, reception, how this was happen also to uh, to kids in in the Serbian national team. Um, they have to think by steps what they have to do, what essentially they have to do, which will drive them over the bridge over the bridge where down is 200 meters. So they don't pay attention on how deep it is, but how they have to put their feet. It's stupid, but trust me, this actually happened. Balloons, as a reminder, is they don't use legs or entire movement, and trust me, they come back right away. Games are based on goal to achieve with the skill to acquire or to improve. So here we have, if you make skill point or some part element of the game, you get double value. But if you make mistake, it's also penalty double. So we give them that all action produce or good or bad. So they have to strive and focus on what they have to do. Some drills of combination I have done with the these two are two Russian girls on my camp with the, with the position and everything. With I am showing where the ball has to go and why it's important that they arrive with the legs oriented towards the place where they have to play the ball. Why? Because in this age, they already have to understand why it's important to be perfect in movement and perfect in position because you're giving less space to make mistake. This is another exercise where you, you have serve and you have to receive the ball inside of the basket. You give them the goal. This group that you see now is a younger group. This group is 13, 14. This is uh, repetitive work. They are more, of course. Here you can have plenty of exercises. The most important thing is to give them long movement, long movement, and higher ball. If they have longer movement and higher ball, they will maintain the ball longer in plane. If they just push the ball and ball goes very sharp, they are killing each other. So. Fundamentally, they have to explain one to each other uh, exactly this. Final part of the training is 15 to 30 minutes. We already started in a main training, 3-3, three, 4-4, three, four, four, five, five, six, six game, which are, as I said, with accent to some game elements or some key elements that we want to improve, uh, with always giving uh, awards and uh, goals always, never just simply to play. Short talks are towards uh, fear control, to check some details, to recall attention, and 
help them to understand what are the steps to arrive to uh, to the goal. So essentially, how to help them to uh, not run too much towards what can happen if I make a mistake or to project virtual reality that doesn't exist that we call fear, which are our expectation. We know what we are speaking about, but only to focus on what they have to do, which means orientation towards the ball, complete movement to follow the ball and exactly to have idea where the ball has to finish. Uh, always, as I said, congratulate the kids which have done as they have to do because they like that. So I'm ready for the questions. When you are ready for the questions, I'm here. Right. Thanks a million for that, Vanya. That's very interesting. Um, so there's a lot of questions in. I suppose the first, and the, it was a, similar to a question asked last week, what would you advise if, um, say, a 13, 14 year old joins and that's the first time that they start with the club. So they've not done the, the, the younger age kind of training. And of course, we don't know if they've done any sport before. What would you advise the um, approach to be? Probably you remember when I said for the kids that are coming for my camp, 15% of them never played volleyball before. Hmm. Uh, but they already have some motor development, which is good. And this is mainly important because learning of volleyball skills is a very long process. Okay. Uh, we don't have to rush. We must have patience for certain aspects. These kids are lucky because they didn't start to play setting and passing in age of nine. For them, it's going to be uh, with age 13. They will learn setting and passing much faster. Only they will not be so quietly perfect at the beginning. They will be a little bit like uh, dirty, let's say like that. But um, absolutely, they can get inside without any problem. They have to start with a group which for uh, capabilities of playing technical skills is on their level with the beginners, but very soon move them higher with other selections. And after some three or four months, they will come with their uh, teammates or with their friends with their age. They will be a little bit rude at the beginning uh, with the movement, with the, with the volleyball, but they will fix up because they will watch. They will watch the others and they will try and they will strive to be better. So uh, this is something that it's my experience, actually. As I said, listen, that middle blocker from Serbia, he started volleyball with 16 years. You know, and nobody can tell me that he is not setting or, or passing or, or, or spiking well, because actually his technique is very good. But why? Because he have done motor development as he's supposed to do, coordination and agility. He is actually a motor phenomenon. And for him was very easy to upgrade with technique what was done before, essentially. We can construct the roof if the base are solid. And would your advice change if, if the whole group started? Say somebody put together a brand new club, they were all 13, 14 year olds, so there's no higher level for them to, to look up to. Um, would your advice even respect to minimal correction, etc., change at all? Or would that just remain as is, that, that they follow the program, but they just probably go quicker? Look, 13, 14, they are physiologically changing. Okay, so we know what age is. I have daughter that age. Uh, mainly is to encourage them not to give up. Mainly in this, because uh, they will start in this age, you know, one ear is bigger, hands are becoming to be big and fit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and spots everywhere. So they start to look at, at themselves, you know, especially if they have to go to the gym, you know, to take shorts and, and shirt. For them, it's like, you know, it's not very comfortable. So 
helping them and supporting them without putting them pressure is becoming fundamental. Even if they don't have anybody in front of them, you can organize to show them somebody of their age or older just to see some game or something, uh, game or something like that. I've learned a lot watching other people play, and I was trying to imitate it. We as a beings, as I said, we learn 90% by watching. So when you are watching others, you are learning. And I believe this is, this is the best way. First, to maintain them inside without putting too much pressure on them. And second, give them always that carrot that will bring them, you know, to go further and further. Okay, um, a lot of questions are coming in in various ways around the timing. Um, and I appreciate that a lot of your timing is talking about a camp as opposed to normal week to week training. But considering I suppose clubs would tend to have a two hour session, one and a half to two hour session a week. And the teachers are maybe talking about a one hour, 45 minute session or the after school one hour session. Um, can you maybe explain how they can tailor back the, the focus points or the, the timings um, to suit the, the times that they have available? Look, if you don't have that time, I, I said it would be perfect if you have this time, like one hour and a half, two hours. If you have only one hour, what you have to do is to focus on what you can. So this means that... Uh, Introduction part has to be 15 minutes, okay? 15 minutes can be final part and 30 minutes can be this main part. This is pretty much enough to do everything. So um, without uh, eliminating any part of the training because it's important, okay? It's important because we are creating the culture. You know, it's not just like, what should I leave because I don't have enough money? No, we have to find that. Um, I believe that when I was mentioning the, the teachers at the beginning, um, all students, all kids are learning in a different way. For somebody, someone will find some difficulty. Uh, somebody will learn some skill in a different way. Uh, for somebody, it will be easier this, somebody will be easier that. I believe that, as I'm a professor at the University of Sport and Physical Education, I believe that a success if you make all students get in love with your sport, with your method that you are teaching. And uh, by helping kids to understand why this is so special, or why this is so important. Uh, I believe that volleyball is a sport that helps a lot to socialize, to communicate, to uh, accept each other with the tolerance and patience that no other sports do because you de we depend on each other. This is not like a basketball that can take the ball and stay and wait for the, for the time to pass, etc., etc., etc. This is much different. Um, I believe that whatever I have learned in, in my life, I have learned from volleyball in that eight one square meter. And it helped me really to, to become a better person than I am. And fundamentally, I believe no matter what plateau of, of learning is, if it's on a medium level or high level, I believe every one of us can give to our team what, uh, what it has to. So uh, um, there is team for every one of us. We have to accept that and we have to be ready and responsible to answer when it comes to, to count. And, the, you know, with bearing in mind the restriction in time that the guys have or the coaches have, um, the testing, of course, it, it, presumably it, it warrants, you know, giving up a session to get that testing done to give that base. No, I, I think it would be good if you can organize that session of testing, not in time of the training. Okay but to arrange in the way that maybe you can do that some like a part of the training. 
um, and prepared it, let's say, uh, I don't know, like weekend or, or after school or something like that. Because it's, uh, it's important, uh, let's say, to organize this in the way that if you do first time that during the weekend, so every next time to be organized uh, during the weekend. So the results will be valid. And uh, you don't take that time from, from, the, from the training. And, and Vanya, you know, your work with the kids through the camps and all the rest, is there any particular age group that's better at training at different times or? Now, on my camp, let's say I have kids 8, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 plus. Um, I have two coaches per age, and coaches are specialized for each group. Uh, we have very often, for example, uh, one age, three groups, and they are structured by capabilities and uh, motor necessities. So let's say kids start even on that age to watch who is in which group, and they start to cry because they are in the uh, worse group, they would like to be in the better group, etc., etc., etc. So very often we change them and we make games between them. And they care to play against each other. Um, kids which are younger, they have uh, less trainings and they last shorter. They are, they, they are shorter because, of course, physiologically kids cannot uh, stand two days training every single day. But they have, we do also yoga. We do uh, practice walks, a lot of walks. We go to swimming pool. Uh, we do some crazy games also uh, out of uh, the volleyball. And for them, it's fantastic. We have arrived at the point that even the kids who have two trainings per day, at night they ask for the ball, they turn on the light, and they go to play beach volleyball. I mean, for them, that's fun, you know. And then we know that we have a succeed. Coaches at the beginning were like, oh my God, but they are tired. How? Oh, I, I didn't kill them enough. I said, no, listen, kids like to play. They enjoy. If they like to go and spend time, this means that we have wake up inside of them. That vermin, that positive vermin, which will take them awaken always. That's good. This means that job that we have do is good good coach that we will speak at the end at the fourth session good coach is the coach that doesn't have to say anything i don't hear you sorry can you hear me now yeah i hear you apologies um, if a coach starts with a group age, I don't know, 10 to 12. Yes. And obviously gets on really well with that, with that group. Do you, would you recommend that they stick with that age group as they progress? No, absolutely. No. Uh, one of the things at the beginning, if you remember at the session one that I said was, uh, that actually, uh, adequate choice of the coaches. Uh, my proposition at the time in past life when I was in Serbian Volleyball Federation with my professor was to uh, prepare the seminar for coaches, which lasts for five days, where we will have enough time to make uh, evaluation of psychology, which means to see who are the persons that will work for our kids, what is their knowledge, what are pedagogical approaches, so at least we know what license we give to people who will work with our kids. I believe beside that, every one of us have to understand because there are two kinds of coaches. Coaches for process and coaches managers. Coaches for process are coaches who are building the players from age youngest to the age before professionals. We have to find on behalf our 
essentially uh, honest relationship towards ourselves. What age is for us? Are the boys or the girls and what age? So in this way, uh, we will be also very good qualified really to help these kids better. Because if we are stick with the group that we don't like or, or we don't feel very comfortable, we are not doing the good job. And I believe that we, in the first place, have to understand that we are trespassing our knowledge and our passion, the kids, forward. And I think um, this question you kind of covered uh, during your session, but it's no harm to stress it again, is if you have drills that you do that develop muscle, um, and obviously you want to develop the kids most at the appropriate time. Do you recommend sticking with those so that you're actually focusing and developing the most in the appropriate way? Or is it more important to change up the drills so that the kids continue to have fun? And uh, my question is this, are this conditioning or volleyball drills? Why? Yeah. Because if there are volleyball drills and we are speaking about development of the muscles, we have missed the point. Muscle you can develop, you can go, I don't know, in, in, uh, in uh, wellness and work with the muscles. It's not a point. But making conditioning with volleyball is different approach. It, within combination, absolutely, yes. Now, uh, it depends, first of all, what kind of muscle groups, not the muscles, muscle groups you want to develop or reinforce. That's number one. And two, uh, do not stick always with the same exercises and same drills. Imagine one drill, which is gay. You can use it for 10 different goals. So use it. Don't stick with one. Don't stay with sharp mentality. Open yourselves. Open yourselves because the players that you are teaching, they have to be wide mind open. So when they go inside of the fields, they will not do only one thing. But when they jump, they said, what the hell will he do now? What we want to create? Unpredictable player. Somebody who is in conditions to do everything. Train them like that. Make them in that way. And what kind of an, what age would you start looking at specializing? I mean, even in your, your um, videos there, you were talking about these are setting drills, these, you know, whatever, passing drills. Yes, yes. Is that for I, every, everybody at that age group? No. Um, I said always not before 16. Because I believe that kids have to learn everything. They have to learn passing, setting, reception, defense, blocking, serving, everything. But for some roles, like for setting, they have to start to specialize a little bit before. Without forgetting other elements. Absolutely. Uh, why I'm saying that? Specialization, look, for example, the middle blockers. Specialization has arrived to the level that they are tall, they spike, they block, and they serve. And then 24, 23, contra-attack, ball defended by setter. Coming to the middle, and middle blocker has to set. He comes under the ball, pew, ball on the other side. That one ball, trust me, one ball can decide championship. I've seen it. I played it. So um, don't rush to push them in 13, in 14, don't. Somebody who have addiction for setter, put them at the place of the setter, but make him also spike, make him defend. 
do not create players like this, especially if they are biologically maturing before. Because there are many cases, especially this is the biggest example of, of all is this, that uh, you have kid with 15 years, he's 189. Already hairy legs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, already muscles. And you put him as a middle blocker. With 19 year, with 19 years, that kid is also 189. And the other guy who was like this with 19 is 205. Playing outside hitter. That kid, 189, you killed him. So what I'm saying, don't specialize kids only by doing extremely this. No. Even if they go for middle blocker, even if they go for uh, setter, even if they go for uh, outside hitter, they have to know other things. When they start to preach and they do, ah, you didn't set the well ball for me, ah, or set, ah, you don't receive the ball, change their positions. So they will understand how difficult it is to play that role. Trust me, and this often happens. Next. Um, okay, so let's let's go with that. But you've got a 13, 14 year old child in your club who's yes. just phenomenal. You know, one of those dream finds and just super at everything. Lovely attitude, everything. And you have a senior team or a more senior team that goes, well, do you know what we want him to him or her to play up with our more senior team? What are your thoughts on that? You know, that the senior team's got to rob the, the gems maybe. I'm probably too early, you know, but but maybe 13, not. 13, 14 to go with the... Well, uh, I mean more senior teams. So maybe to go with the 18-year-old team or maybe to go with the senior, you know. This is against all pedagogical principles and all teachers know that very well. Absolutely no. Why? because kids have to develop with their age. And uh, if they are advanced, if they are uh, more developed, if they are, have more skills than the others, maybe, maybe they can go with a higher category, but not in serious competition, absolutely no. 13, 14 maybe can go with 15, 16 for some trainings, yes. But as you know, um, program is more serious. One year in kids' age means a lot. In velocity, in strength, in resistance, really it means a lot. So it's... Uh, not very good to push them because they can get injured. Again, rushing. I mentioned before, Andrea Gianni, with 16 years, I saw him play for Parma, Champions League. And Parma was Italian champion. With 16 years. You know, I start as a professional with 18 years. And I was sitting on the bench. I have won my first important medal as a player with 19 years, where it was a Balkan Championships, where for the first time Yugoslavia had beaten Bulgaria ever. 3 2. And then I went to military. Then I started to play for uh, the professional club, etc., etc., etc. So, um, you know, it's never too early. What we want to achieve? Do we have to answer to parents investment, money, or we want to produce quality and fruitful athlete 
who maybe in the future really can arrive to the stars. What's our goal? Kids has to develop. And what, what age group do you find the kids absorbed the most? Is it at the youngest age that they just soak it like a no, sponge? No, 11, 16, 11, 16 is the age when they absorb a lot of things. But the next stage, 16, 16, uh, 17, and, and 16, 18 is the age when, where they uh, acquire a lot. In one year, they can change a lot. Really. And uh, I believe that, you know, it's like in learning. You go and you learn very fast. And then you arrive to plateau because there is not much to learn. You are just improving to be a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. But in, at the beginning of the process of learning, you are improving a lot because you didn't know many things. And uh, it's individual. It's very individual. Um, I can tell you, for example, I was, uh, and I'm following now back, um, in 12, 13 years, I was like everybody else. 14, I was a little bit better. Uh, and with 15 to 16, uh, for the first time I played a game, it just switched inside of me. And uh, I played a game like crazy. For the first time, my father embraced it. That was the only time that he embraced it. Uh, and he told me only, I'm very proud of you. Um, this is that potential that I'm saying that from time to time, you need to create environment and situation for kids to explode. Our job is to be there and help them make everything for them to feel, to feel comfortable and believe that they will make this jump of quality. And they will, for sure. When this will happen, it's very individual. But mostly this is from age, let's say, uh, 15, 16 to 18. And Vanya, what would you recommend for us over here to get boys? I know clubs struggle with getting boys to be interested in playing volleyball as much as we have a lot more girls playing than boys, basically. Of course. You know, there is a joke in Serbia. Basketball and handball players mainly are saying that volleyball is a girl sport uh, because actually they are afraid that uh, boys will go to, to volleyball. And because there is no contact sport, so they think you are enough men only if you embrace sweaty men. And if you hit him, uh, and actually I'm very happy about that because uh, I believe that women's are much cleverer than men's. So it's a kind of compliment for us. Um, there is strong struggle. Actually, now uh, I see that also in Serbia, but generally there is a big problem with men's volleyball. Um, it's a very small number of the boys coming to, to volleyball, actually because they are seeing other sports uh, with much more interest uh, or much more interesting, which basketball have more money, football have more money, tennis have more money. So they are much more oriented towards those sports. And uh, of course, uh, I'm sure that also in other countries um, basketball players are speaking the same thing uh, because you know it's a way to I don't know treat us but uh, something seriously has to happen on a global level to approach the boys and uh, invite them to come uh, it's just, uh, how can I say, it's, it's a trend. 
it's a tendency that uh, it's very, very bad for us now. Um, I don't know. I, we, we have tried here to open the section where I was a coach and I publicly say on my Instagram account, I will coach boys for free. If they come, nobody showed up for a month. It's just, it's just like that. That's such a shame. Yep. In Serbia, is it televised a lot? I always wonder if, because in Ireland, it's not televised. Yes, yes it is. But, uh, you know, you, you must have uh, you must have good organization who is working on it. And actually, I will not comment now organization because I'm not part of it. So, okay, right. I have saved a load of questions on the testing because um, I thought I could maybe summarize as best I can all the questions that have come in, and then maybe you can talk in general terms. A lot are just asking about, okay, we're just volunteer coaches. Are we supposed to be qualified in doing this testing or are we supposed to secure you know, qualified people to come in and do these types of testing? And I will give you a summarized answer. Okay. You are making wrong questions. Those who are questioning their potential and they're, they, those who don't dare, they don't do. You don't need to have paper that you are Olympic champion coach to become one. These tests are nothing. These are tools for you to understand how to work with your kids better and properly. And is there a good source for the for those tests, or is it something you know, that we should develop? Tests are, these tests are so simple. It just tell you for the kid. For example, uh, in September he throws uh, the medicine ball like five meters. In uh, December he throws five thirty. In uh, March he throws seven. So you say, oh ho, here it is. So you have another kid next to you comes, he throws five. Next time he throws 530. You say now he will throw seven and he throws 550. He say, what's wrong? Simply every kid has his own pattern. And if patterns start, start to go exactly as the one before, then you can see, match them and see what differences are between them. Uh, numbers and tests are just an indication for you to use to make program. They are not the program. They are just a tool. That's it. If you do the simple you know, there are a lot of that. You, you just put tests for volleyball, you can see a plenty of them. I mean, I, when I say tests, I, 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 what I want you to open your mind and to understand. You have to know your child. You have to know who you are working with. Only way to work with them properly is to know them well is to open their potentials, to bring them on 100%, to make them happy, to see them cheering inside of the field. For me, the biggest, uh, the biggest repayment was uh, when the child, uh, which parents have separated, which wanted to go away from home, etc., 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 comes full of tears and says, thank you, you make me smile, you make my life have sense again. And we didn't do anything. We just share what is our idea of working with the kids. Why? Because we are one big family. 
your connection with the kids is like connection with the parents. If they decide one day to go to become professionals, it's good, perfect, but that's serious. But 99% of them will not become professionals. And how they will be as future lawyers or directors or uh, researchers, scientists, whatever, depends on you. And do you always take their, the results of the test and, and just watch them in, as individuals improve? Or do you compare them against each other at a certain point? I take the standard. So I see every single generation, did she went better or worse? And I can tell you every year is worse and worse. It goes from a year to a year. And then from that standard, I take every individual and I say if he is over or under the median. So I know exactly in which elements he has to work and improve more. If he has to work on uh, strength, if he has to work on velocity to be in the standard of his age. You know, so for serious studies, for serious studies, that's not enough, of course, because we should use uh, DNA tests to watch the uh, muscle samples, etc., 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 to see uh, what is the difference or what is composure of white and and uh, red tissue of the muscles, etc., et so we can have complete picture. But this is high tech, and this is something different that doesn't help. Okay, um, a lot of the other questions and um, the things about underage competition, you know, the the very junior age competition. Um, how to deal with parents, um, the number of kids per coaches, etc. That was covered in the first session. Um, I'm going to suggest that the people that have asked those questions maybe revisit the first session, have a listen again. And if you still have a question, you can pop us a, an email in advance of next week and we can always bring it up with, with Vanya at that point. Other than that, I believe that I've covered all of the questions. Um, yes, a bit uh, of one, an inter one, interrogation. But... One of the of the main issues today that we have all is under a co underage competition that have nothing, nothing of worth because uh, it's dangerous because kids can think that they have won everything, they give up because they are just too satisfied or they are too stressed. Parents are shouting, parents are fighting in between them. Uh, coaches have tactics. I watch a couple of games of Italian championship. I watch a couple of games of Serbian championship. I can tell you I'm absolutely disgusted. Absolutely disgusted. Because I know that none of these kids will become players. All of them will stop before. Because the treatment of the parents and the treatment of the, the coach is like towards the professional. I mean, leave these kids to play, leave these kids to enjoy. Because if he start to work with 14 years, what he will do with 25? It's crazy, it's insane. You know, we are killing our kids with killing their desires. That's why they go to the phones. Because nobody here will tell them, no, you can't, or you no, you must. As I said in the first session, if the program in the field is more interesting than phone, they will not touch the phone. Don't talk to the parents if they pretend to know for their kid or can Mike, no, yo, I am the coach. You are the parent. Bring me your kid. Your kid is a very good kid. I can work with him. But don't mix up with my program, my ideas, my, my, no. Because you are the parent. I'm not sleeping with your wife or I'm not spending time with your husband. That's it. We have to work together towards the kid. Kid, I spoke about pedagogical triangle, which is also sport triangle. Kid on the top and coach and the parent are down. 
base of the pyramid. I didn't want anything, guys, nothing until 19 years, nothing. And this helped me, you know why? Because renouncing to the pleasure brings big, big carrots to jackass that you are running behind and you want to succeed and you want to succeed. If you eat too many chocolate, it will not be so sweet. It will be like any, I mean, you will say, chocolate, come on. And some kids will die to have it. Same thing is also with playing with the game. They would like, they should desire to play. If not, we have failed. We failed them. My kids on the camp play only one game the last day. That's it. That's it. Some other question? No, uh, that's pretty much uh, covered all of those. As I say, anyone that had kind of some of those questions that he's covered at the end, um, swiftly maybe have a look at the earlier session because um, a lot was covered in yes. there as well in more detail. Yeah, then maybe I will say just one more thing that I said before. Um, sensitive periods of strength, velocity, uh, resistance, coordination and agility are happening in this period from 9 to 17, but mainly from 11 to 16. Don't miss up to work with kids on motor development, please. It's very important. This is what build up them for further. Doesn't matter if they will become volleyball players or not. Volleyball has his own way, and it will find always his own way. But the mode of development, no. So, if there is no more questions. No, that's, that's pretty much summed it up. Um, Vanya, thanks so much for tonight and for answering all the questions of everybody. As I say, if anyone has a question that they think of afterwards, by all means, pop Gary in an email in the office and we can see if Fanny will have time to cover it the next time. We'll add it into the Q&A for the next time um, and give you some time to maybe think about it as well, which is nice. Uh, otherwise, thanks so much and everybody, please enjoy your evening and thank you for joining us in Volleyball Ireland on our, on yes. our second session and of the four. Next week, see you with Serious Age 17 plus. Yeah, it's moving on to the more serious yeah. stuff now. Yeah. Um, so it's Monday evening at seven o'clock again, and we'll see you all back here. Thanks very much. Cheers, everybody.